okay i think we have a good number of participants who have joined in i know some of them will be joining a bit late um but uh, for the sake of time and discipline with people who have joined uh, i would like to initiate this webinar uh, first of all let me welcome the team here um, we have jayant anuj das and uh, kul closher joining us from clark university today uh, and uh, my colleague jerry whom you will be seeing a lot going forward when we conduct these webinars for for the us options so uh, i want to reduce both of them you might have seen me a lot of time been doing webinars for germany and a lot of you have been asking me question when are we coming options with us so yes now we have an option to go to us as well and as promised earlier we'll continue to bring options which makes study abroad affordable and which helps you in fast forwarding your career and this particular program which we have launched with a uh, pretty high uh, ranking and quality university clark which jain then cole will talk a little more about is exactly what i wanted to do when i started when i thought about this whole upgrade abroad opportunity how can i help more students to study abroad here not only we are bringing down the costs significantly for the learners and getting them high number of like we are getting a very good scholarship but also we are able to get them in the process of going abroad while they studying in india so on that note uh, i know you will have lot of questions um, please use q and a box to ask your questions we will not be able to look at chat box while answering your questions so my request to all the participants who have joined in you are seeing a q and a box use that to ask your questions and just to start i think the first thing i want jay uh, and cole uh, to give an introduction about the clark university and this particular partnership with upgrade which they have i know worked very hard to launch so let me ask jay and then cole to uh, if you have a presentation you want to do in the beginning you can you can do that uh, let me know if you have a sharing option if not then i can give it to you yes thank you all Arun. right so hopefully everybody can see this and it's all pulled up um my name is cole closer i'm the assistant director of international recruitment at clark university i specifically help students from south asia uh, particularly india get started here at clark so any questions that students have uh either before they arrive about the programs about uh Clark University um and really just things in logistics about getting set up to come to the US uh that's what I'm here for that's what giant my uh partner here giant anuj das is here for um and I'll let him say a quick hi as well yeah hello everyone uh it's a pleasure connecting with you uh we will be running this presentation to highlight some of the key points about the partnership and as we move along we will be happy to answer all the questions that you have uh over to you cole Thanks. let me first ask first question on this slide uh, jayant and cole both yeah. i see a sun and peart lux can you guys explain and then we have a large alphabets m d c c c and i think it, it all means something Every, everybody has seen upgrade logo they are looking at clark university logo first time so just give a little this background story about this logo um you know it, it's our official seal the uh what you see at the bottom here is the actual date that Clark was founded 1886 uh and it's just spelled out in roman numerals uh okay. so that's what we see there at the bottom uh fiat lux um my latin is a little rusty um but i know lux stands for uh light which would explain the sun there uh, but this has been our official seal for quite some time you can see it in my background as well um and you know it's been a a great logo for clark and if you see this it means it is a clark branded uh program uh and is the official seal of clark university well wow. so let that be just, uh, i might just jump in there cuz i i know a little bit about clark as well and what uh, fiat looks uh, means is let there be light and yeah. that's where the sun comes into play as well um so at clark when they were first founded or when they did this logo as they wanted to spread light um and be part of that sort of bigger picture so well 
yes i think cole you wanted to do some uh, a slides yeah please go ahead yeah absolutely so let's just kick it off uh first off who is clark university so one thing we want to make sure you understand is where we fall in the grand scheme of things and kind of where clark is in terms of institutions in the united states uh, as you know there are so many institutions in the united states so what separates clark what makes it special and what makes it right for you well the first off and the first thing i want to point out is clark is a very strong and prestigious institution uh, our academics are very high quality and we are consistently ranked in the top 100 national universities in the united states uh, so this year we are currently at number 103. The previous year we are also 103. The year before that we were 97 and the year before that we were 93. So we're always right around that uh, top 100 mark of the best universities in the United States. So that's point number one. Point number two of what makes Clark such a great fit. And as I mentioned, I work with Indian students, international students all the time. And this is one thing that I really like to speak to because I know how important it is to you. And that is Clark is ranked number 27 for best value school in the United States, meaning the money you spend on your degree will show a significant return on your investment. You're getting a very high quality degree, a very high quality education for not that much money. So. I know that uh, is extremely important to all of our students, international students especially, and it was one of the reasons why Ankur brought us on uh, to begin with, because it meets up well with UpGrad and uh, their goals and motives as well. So uh, kind of looking at Clark from a more broader scope, uh, some of the other rankings and recognitions to give you an idea of where we fall in the grand scheme of the U.S. market. Uh, we are AACSB accredited, which is for uh, business programs, but it is still a very difficult uh, accreditation for universities to get as a whole. And really just goes to show the legitimacy of the entire university on a larger level. Uh, we are ranked in the top 1,000 universities by QS World University Ranking. And then a couple other things and a couple other rankings that I picked out uh, just because I personally really like them. Uh, number uh 18 uh by the princeton review for happiest students uh, i really particularly like that one because when you come to clark it's showing you're not just getting an education but you're getting an experience so you're going to experience more of the american culture the american lifestyle and really become part of a community and that's what i really attribute that ranking to is the community aspect that Clark is able to form with their students and how the students are able to interact on campus with their professors and everything in between uh, and how you will feel really a part of the Clark community when you are here. And it goes beyond just an education. And then finally, the last ranking that I pulled up here for you to see is the Times Higher Education ranked us as being one of the top small universities in the world. In fact, we were ranked number 21 top small universities. Uh, so that's fantastic because we absolutely identify ourselves as a small university. We're about 3,000, 3,500 students. So to be one of the best universities at the thing that we're trying to identify as a small university really goes to show what Clark can do and for uh, itself and what it can do for you. So let's get a better idea of what Clark actually looks like in the Clark community. So Clark was founded back in 1887, just like the logo shows. Um, and it was actually founded as a graduate university and it was only graduate schools and graduate studies when it was founded. And that plays a huge part in our identity of who we are as a university today. So everybody here is looking for, uh, you know, graduate study programs, and we were discussing our graduate study programs. So to go to a university that values those programs at such a high level is really important. A lot of times, U.S. universities, graduate studies is a secondary thought. It's a very small portion of the population, and they give little time and effort to the, their actual grad studies. It's undergrad focus first. 
However, Clark, we actually have one third of our students still are graduate students. So it is so much in the forethought of Clark's uh, mind and in the presence of the identity of Clark as a whole. So when you come to Clark for your grad studies, you're gonna be taken seriously and you're gonna be a, a huge contributing member to the Clark Society. As I mentioned, we're about 3,000 students. Uh, and of those 3,000 students, uh, a lot of the students are international. At the graduate level, it's about 60%. Actually, I know that number is a little bit low than what it actually is. Uh, for this fall, we have increased our international student numbers. It's probably gonna be closer to 70%. A lot of those students are actually coming from India as well and South Asia. So when you're here, you're gonna definitely be able to find uh, a community of your own uh, if you feel more comfortable with uh, people from your own country, but you're also gonna be able to experience uh, you know, the American lifestyle as well and get involved in that community. So really, again, we're welcoming to international students and we're really open to pretty much people from all around the globe. Another important fact about Clark University and what really separates us from the uh, crowd of American universities is our world-renowned faculty to student ratio. So for every 10 students that we have, we have one teacher. So you are really going to be able to get in front of your teachers, ask them questions, interact with them in the classroom. And it also shows how small the university is on the uh, interaction level. So you really get to know your professors and really get hands-on experience as opposed to sitting in a large classroom being lectured at. It's really a lot more immersive in your education. All right, so where is Clark University? That's always a big question for international students, and I know. Uh, so we are located in Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, Worcester is about an hour west of the city of Boston. Uh, so Boston is obviously a very large international tourist hub. Many students know that. Um, just from net name identification. Uh, so Worcester is very, very close. It's about a 45 tra uh, minute train ride or car drive into the city of Boston. But Worcester itself is actually a, quite a large city. It's the second largest city in the New England area. So the New England area, if you're not familiar with US geography, is the top northeastern part of the US. And uh, so this is actually the second largest city in the Northeast and uh, has a lot going on for itself. Uh, while Clark University might be a small university of 3000 students, there's actually 13 other universities in Worcester. So it gives a great college town feel. Uh, so you'll be able to interact with students from other universities, uh, share ideas, uh, see them on the town. And it really gives this feeling that Worcester is uh, there for the students as much as it is a city in its own right. Uh, Worcester is also a very welcoming population as well. 21% of the Worcester population are immigrants uh, themselves. Uh, and finally, you know, Worcester, like I mentioned, very close to Boston. Um, there are 20 trains going in and out of the city every day. So it's very easy to hop on the train, go in, check out the city and come back in the evening. Um, I actually used to live in Worcester, work in Boston and make that train at trip every single day. So very, very doable. It's what our students like to do often in the kind of the, um, their weekends or the time off. So it's really whatever you'd like. But the advantage to being in our own separate city is you don't have the high cost of living that Boston does. So Boston being a tourist city has a very high uh, cost of living. Worcester on the other hand is right on the national average for cost of living and is much, much less expensive. So you can have the lifestyle of living in a large international tourist city like Boston, but not have to pay for it and be able to really make your money go further. Uh, like I mentioned, there's a lot going on in Worcester itself as well. You know, plenty of art museums, plenty of different museums in general, uh, tons of shopping, uh, areas to go out, restaurants, uh, cafes, uh, whatever is interest to you, tons of outdoor activities. Uh, and we actually just opened up a brand new minor league baseball stadium, which if you're a fan of uh, 
sports in general, it's a fantastic just to be outside, enjoy the uh, daylight. Uh, it, they have a huge shopping center around there as well now. Uh, it's brand new, just opened up. I went to it the other week, fantastic, and really just a lot of fun. So uh, really exciting for a lot of our students. Cool. Uh, it will be great if we can um, go to the program slide uh, yeah. just to highlight on uh, some of the specific points uh, about the. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. now that way we got a better idea of Clark University, let's kind of focus our uh, shift to uh, our actual programs themselves. So our programs are housed in the School of Professional Studies, which is fantastic. And we have three main programs we're looking at today. Uh, master's in data analytics, our master's in information technology, and master's in project management. Yeah. Uh, so, for all the attendees, uh, just a piece of information that right now we are, the current collaboration we have with Upgrad is providing us options to these three programs, as Cole mentioned. Uh, the opportunity lies in the fact that you can join Upgrad and you can finish your first two semesters of the diploma program, which will enable you to get credit waivers into School of Professional Studies three programs, uh, which will be discussed by Cole. Uh, over to you, Cole, on the point on the programs. Yeah, absolutely. So as John's mentioning, you would be able to finish your first two semesters through Upgrad and then join for your final year at Clark University uh, and be able to study uh, the programs that we discussed, uh, the data analytics uh, being one of our more popular ones. Our data analytics program is absolutely exploded in the last year uh, and is without a doubt our most popular program that we have here at Clark University and is really fantastic. And it makes complete sense if you think about it. There's about five uh, smart devices for every single person in the world. So there's about 21 billion different smart devices right now. And all that is creating data and all that data needs to be mined and analyzed. And that's what the skills we're gonna give you in our data analytics program to do. Really be able to understand uh, the different types of uh, data-driven and decision-making abilities and really give, uh, you know, driving business growth through the use of data and advanced analytics. Uh, it's a really fantastic program and it really gives you a lot of flexibility. One thing that I want to mention, and this is true for our data analytics program, our IT program, and our um, project management program, is that these programs are all taught by working professionals. So everybody that you're going to be working with, all of your professors, are gonna be currently working in the field that they are teaching. So this gives you great realistic understanding of what employers want to see from their students. And it gives you great hands-on experience. That's something that we really try to focus on, our real world skills to improve your marketability for getting a job after you graduate. That's what we focus on here at Clark. It's not a research-based uh, institution uh, when it comes to these programs. It's really about making you more valuable in the workplace and really getting your return on investment. So our data analytics program, like I mentioned, uh, has become extremely popular uh, and has become one of our uh, top programs that we have um, just because of the growth of the data analytics world. And we expect it to continue to be one of our most uh, uh, popular and strong programs that we offer. Next up, we have our project management program. So project management it really focuses on different uh, cycles of projects. So if you think about it, every company has special projects that they need to launch, especially today in tech. Uh, you know, there's always new projects that need to happen for organizations. And this will take you through the skill sets of the, an entire project life cycle. So starting from being able to identify needs that the uh, company has, uh, understanding the, a formulation of a solution 
uh, creating a, the project, implementation of the project, analysis of the project to see if it's successful and if it needs to be pivoted, and at what point do you close out the project. So our project management program, while it can be applicable to all different types of projects, it does have a strong focus on IT-based projects because we understand that's where the need in the marketplace is today. So things such as cloud implementation, um, you know, hybrid cloud implementation, um, you know, understanding uh, new software and being able to launch new software for a uh, organization, whether it be a company or a nonprofit, uh, and just being able to take it from scratch and get it to completion. So our project management program has been uh, very popular as well, uh, and it's a very exciting uh, aspect for students who really want to be able to see something from start to finish and really have a project of their own uh, and a great way for students to really be have some ownership of their projects and their work life going forward. And then finally, we have our information technology program. Uh, so IT programs and IT departments have been a staple in uh, US organizations for the past 15, 20 years at this point. And every single year, it becomes more and more important. And the demand for it uh, becomes more important because organizations, companies are becoming more reliant on technology to help them and their services. So every single uh, program and organization will really uh, need more uh, technology-based uh, employees and someone who really understands their technological systems. And not only is the quantity there for uh, jobs and positions, because pretty much every new organization needs one now, uh, but the quality is there as well. We, the need for high quality individuals uh, who understand technological uh, you know, issues at an organization is really there. Uh, there's a lot of underqualified uh, people who are working in these positions just because companies need people that badly. So being able to get a master's degree in this will really set you apart and will make you so valuable on the marketplace because you have the expertise to really bring that to a company and people can go in feeling confident knowing that you are going to be the one to deliver a satisfying uh, work environment and really help out their IT systems. So again, our IT program, our project management program, and our uh, data analytics program, we're really focused on hands-on learning experiences and really trying to help students make them become more profitable. So yep. let's just take a quick look at the entry requirements uh, for Clark I'm, University. Yep. Uh, so I see a lot of questions already um, okay. relevant to the entry requirements part. Um, I'm sure one of the key points as the talking point of the session was about STEM degrees. Want to highlight that all the three programs my colleague Cole spoke about focuses on STEM education. It falls under STEM education. Uh, and that's the that's the like primary uh, part of the discussion. Uh, the entry requirements are highlighted in terms of we need applicants to have a 3.0 US GPA, which depends on your Indian percentage based on which university you are coming from, your degree uh, credentials, like somebody with a bachelor's of engineering or bachelor's of technology will have a different sort of evaluation compared to people who are completing BCom or BSc. And I trust the upgrade counseling team to guide you on the nuances of the GPA evaluation. We need an applicant enrolling through the upgrade program to have to meet the English proficiency scores of IELTS of 6.5 or TOEFL of 85 or a Duolingo score of 110. One of the key components of this partnership with Upgrad is the learners are waived off the requirement of GRE or GMAT. Uh, if you look at any 
STEM program with a credible ranked university like Clark, your GRE scores become the prime of SE point of discussion. Uh, without the GRE scores, your chances can be limited. But this partnership with Upgrad uh, assures us that the learners will have adequate learning skills we're taught within the program so that they can succeed in our graduate program. Uh, I'm sure when you coordinate with Upgrad team, they will clarify the details to you. If somebody is enrolling for this program, they would get two credits waived off from their graduate course curriculum, and which will make sure that the applicant or the learner can finish their master's program in two semesters in US at a substantially lower tuition fee offered through the collaboration and still be able to get the all the benefits that a STEM degree offers. For example, STEM degrees entitle you for a longer work permit stay of three years, which can be availed through this partnership. Um, I won't take much time of yours. It feels like we have been discussing a lot. I could already see question answers, uh, Q&A session having a lot of questions. We'll be happy to start answering those questions and we can always refer back to the specific slides if there is anything that we need to. Sure. Does that sound okay, Ankur? Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, okay, I think uh, let me just start with few questions which I think are important. Um, sure. Uh, first question which which people typically are asking uh, is that I don't have a four-year bachelor degree in India. I have done a three-year bachelor degree. Let's say in case I have done a BBA, I have done a BCom or I have done a BCA, BCA. Am I eligible for an education in US master's education? If yes, what are the ways? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think uh, the best person to answer this will be Jerry. Uh, because he's the one who uh, like who expertises on that. Uh, but yes, uh, through this partnership, yes, we can. And maybe Jerry can uh, elaborate more on the specific. Yeah, um, I would say I, I know, obviously, uh, Clark does accept students with a three year bachelor's degree um, from India, uh, especially uh, those degrees mentioned by Ankur. Uh, those are typically the more common degrees in India that we do see. Um, Going, inst going to institutions, but um, for, for our partners and our future partners at Upgrad, we would always be able to uh, make that uh, part of the admission process. Uh, the institutions we will be working with will always be accepting three-year degrees. So it's something that you can be confident about uh, when you're coming through to our programs that our partners are going to be accepting your BCA or BBA or BCom, uh, BSc, whatever it might be, that is three years and moving on to our partner institutions. Uh, we, we typically will be working with um, institutions in the US that have experience with three-year degrees uh, from India and also have them on their approved list. So yes, um, that will definitely be the case um, and especially coming through our programs uh, at Upgrad and going to our partners. Um, some institutions in the US still do not accept three-year degrees, um, but those are typically uh, those Ivy Leagues or those um, maybe higher ranked institutions that um, you know have a, have a specific four-year cutoff and have lots of students with four-year degrees coming to them. But our partners at Upgrad will always be accepting three-year degrees. Yeah. So hopefully that helps answer, answer that. Yeah. And just to add to it, Ankur, uh, if a student is completing a three-year degree from a NAC accredited college or university, uh, their credits definitely rise when we are talking about any U.S. university accepting them. Got it. Understood. Uh, I have a question which is anonymous attendee. He's asking this. Hello, sir. I am a mechanical engineer. I have completed my bachelor's this year and I'm looking forward to study master's in the U.S. The problem is that I have a one-year gap gap year, leap year during my studies. What will that be problem? So uh, I don't know whether your gap was between the class 12th and the graduation or after graduation. Um, but if it is a gap between class 12th and starting the graduation, uh, Jayant and uh, Jerry, do you see a challenge in accepting a student who has a gap between the class 12th and before he starts the graduation? No. Um, answer will be no. If somebody has a gap year after 12, it's perfectly all right. Most of the American students 
opt for a gap year after their 12th uh, to find out, to evaluate what they want to do. The concern can be if the student has a gap year within their bachelor's. Yeah. And we are also open to have a dialogue if it is because of some medical reasons, if it is for a valid reason. Uh, sometimes we see that there is a gap year because of number of backlogs that somebody might have or needed to clear that. That can be a cause of concern because that impacts your academic credential. Uh, but if somebody has a gap year, even within studies because of medical reasons, they need to highlight that in their statement of purpose. They need to highlight uh, with specific documentation to definitely have a conversation with the admission committee. Um, Cole and Jerry can... Uh... Yeah, we lost you, Jen. You I, I was just saying uh, that the student, if they can justify... Um, yeah. why there is a gap here because of medical reason or anything like that, the admission committee will be more than happy to consider them uh, for a discussion. Yeah, yeah good. Cole and uh, Jerry can add to it. Uh, any yeah, point. let's say another scenario I wanted because I see some other buddy, buddy asking the question. After graduation, if the planner is not working and there is a gap, like in the one year he was at not working because of COVID and many other reasons, Will he be acceptable to continue his studies outside? And how much gap is allowed after completing your graduation before you start your master's if you do not have sufficient work experience to prove that there was a gap for a reason? It should not be a problem if they have a gap after graduation. Uh, do, you to, do you want me to add some, yeah, some, some side to this as well, Giant? Yeah. Sorry? Do you want me to add to this as yeah, well? Yeah, I, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I know this question typically comes up because, um, you know, in the past, especially applying for a visa to the U.S., having a gap year or more was actually uh, made it very challenging to get your visa. Um, these days, uh, it's it's definitely changed slightly. Uh, visas are. Um, uh, a little bit more accessible than they were years ago, um, especially to to the U.S. specifically, uh, as we saw this year, um, you know, a very high percentage of visa approvals compared to years past. There is also a lot of understanding, uh, given the pandemic situation, about gap years right now. So, you know, you're you're coming at a good time because it's very understandable of having a gap year or two, um, because a lot of people around the world have had a, a gap year or two, um, given the situation in going on around the world. So, it's not a concern at this moment. I know that is a uh, a historical concern for students from India and also, you know, surrounding Nepal and, and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Um, but right now is a very good time uh, to sort of take advantage of that less of a concern for that gap year. Um, and especially if you're doing upgrad programs, because you might have a gap year, but at least you're doing some study uh, on part time or, or online with us. And that also really helps your profile when going into that, um, you know, that visa interview uh, as well. Got it. I want to ask one question, which I see is a very relevant question. Uh, We've touched upon it. Uh, Sujit GM is asking, I have a three years degree BSc computer science. I think that is okay. With five backlogs. I passed out in 2008. Could there be an exception to accept my profile with five backlogs? I have 10 years of work experience though. So uh, I, I think Jayant and I, my answer will be send us your documents, uh, Sujit. Uh, once you send us a document, then only we will be able to review the application. They, if your application, your profile is very good, there can be an exceptional approval by the admission committee. Jent, uh, am I right in saying this? Um, Cole can um, Cole can add to it, definitely. Yeah. He does that every day. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's spot on, Ankur. Um, so, you know, we have that maximum for backlogs, uh, but we are actually flexible with it. Um, you know, we are willing to accept students that exact uh, question that you had there uh, who have work experience but maybe a few more backlogs and really we do a holistic review of students so we might be saying four backlogs maximum but if you have really strong uh, work experience or really strong gmat or gre that helps uh, bring up your uh, overall profile 
we'll absolutely take a look at it uh, from top to bottom, as opposed to having these minimums just be a cutoff and say goodbye. Uh, we're trying to be flexible. We understand that uh, a good student has a lot of different faces uh, and a lot of different backgrounds. And that's what we con are concerned about more than anything else. Thanks a lot, Lord, for answering this question. Um, let me ask the next question, which I see is an interesting question. Uh, Hemant Udagari is asking, what are the scholarship options we have in Clark if you're coming through upgrade program? I think, Jen, would you add, like to add the scholarship if the student is getting through sure. uh, option? Yeah. Sure. Um, so just to answer the question for Hemant, um, so we have considered learners to have maximum scholarship within School of Professional Studies if they are coming to us through the upgrad program. Uh, our School of Professional Studies is quite popular, not just for the STEM array of courses, it is also priced uh, pretty well for the South Asia market. In fact, the total course fee is around $30,000 for entire program. Whereas if somebody is joining us um, through the upgrad partnership, their tuition fee can be in the range of seventeen to eighteen thousand dollars for entire course fee of two semesters. So that is a substantial saving, um, and learner can get flat thirty percent scholarship if they complete the program um, within the stipulated uh, like entry requirements set by IIIT Bangalore and Clark, uh, which entitles you to get this maximum scholarship. Um, rest all the financial specific points and other questions on finances, you can always uh, reach out to the upgrad team. They will be able to provide you breakdown of the cost involved in the yeah. process. Great. Uh, so you are getting the max scholarship which you can get from Clark through upgrade program. That is the good news. And more details are available on in our brochure as well as you can have a discussion with a counselor who will explain it to you. Um, now, question is, will this Dharmala Banket Prasad, I believe Reddy, is asking, will this program impact our OPT chances as it is a one-year master's program? Uh, I think uh, we need to uh, uh, specify typically what is the kind of master's program in US uh, are offered and uh, how it is different from that particular program uh, and how it impacts the OPT or not. Um, Jen, would you like to help us here? Sure. Um, and I'll probably need some help from Jerry as well on this. Uh, so typically, if somebody is talking about an MS degree, it ranges between three to four semesters. And a learner will be completing 10 units or 10 credits, depending on the university that they're joining in. Uh, if the program is approved as a STEM, uh, under STEM uh, guidance, uh, the student is uh, eligible for three years of OPT, optional practical training after their master's program. This program that we have launched in collaboration with Upgrad entitles applicant to have the full STEM OPT within the pro after completion of the program. The minimum requirement for being eligible for OPT is completing two semesters onshore, which this program allows you to. Any learner who comes to this partnership will be finishing the final two semesters on campus taught program with Clark, which will allow them to be eligible for uh, the OPT. Jerry, would you like to add Um, yeah, I, I think uh, Cole could probably talk about Clark specifically, but um, the idea of, of what we're uh, doing at Upgrad is that you you have that two semesters um, and finish off your final year uh, because you'll be obtaining credit uh, for your studies with us. But typically in the U.S., master's degrees range from anywhere from 12, uh, 10 to, to 12 classes typically courses and in the US we do credits um, so it's usually around 30 to 36 credits depending on the program which 
typically would take students a year and a half um, doing, you know, four courses per semester or, or less, essentially. So with Upgrad, we're able to give you that credit to, to start your kick off your master's degree, meaning you can finish in two semesters quite comfortably and still have your OPT options afterwards. Thanks, Jerry, for answering it. Um, I, I wanted to pick this question coming from an anonymous attendee again. Um, I have completed B in 2015 with no backlog and 8.32 CGPA. Very good. My IELTS score is 7 with no modules less than 6. Also, I'm having 6.5 years of experience in IT companies. Can I get scholarship? Um, attorney, anonymous attendee, whoever has asked this question, answer to your uh, question has always already been given by Jen that you're getting max scholarship which you can get from this program, which is 30% already in upgrade program. In addition to that, if you go through upgrade program, you are saving the cost of studying two courses or six credits in US. So you cannot get a better opportunity and better affordable program compared to this. Uh, I hope, uh, Jen, do you agree with me? Sure. I think um, his profile sounds pretty good to me, and uh, he should probably look at connecting with one of the upgrade counselors to yeah. know more about the program and start planning process. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh Javed, I did my BTEC in 2013. Am I eligible for this program? Uh, Sheikh, you need to give more details about you, such as what was your score in your BTEC, how many backlogs you had. And uh, to know eligibility for this program, just go on our platform and fill the application form. If you meet the requirement, you will get a, a, a offer letter from us, which will inform you whether you are eligible or not. So don't worry, just go and fill the application form on a portal and you'll get to know. Um, I pick this question, Gurmeet Madhyan. Hello, sir. My name is Gurmeet Singh from Haryana. Okay. I have done engineering in 2015 with 66%. After that, I was preparing for UPSC, but I didn't pass in it. So right now I'm looking forward for the USA. So am I eligible for USA? Uh, uh, Gurmeet, if I understand you're talking about six years of gap uh, between completing your engineering and starting your now discussion about US. Um, if you do not have any work experience, then you need to at least uh, give us sufficient documents uh, before we can discuss this particular question, whether six year gap will be acceptable or not. Um, Jen, I think as a process, uh, if you can just add it here, I think um, mm -hmm. it, it might be a, it might be a, a visa SOP, which we need to write and explain. Otherwise, I, I do not see a reason why uh, a student cannot go if there is a gap of six years. As Cole was mentioning that when we evaluate FIS, we look yeah. at the holistic uh, portfolio or the profile of an applicant. Uh, the entry requirements are good benchmarks to keep in mind. Some of the entry requirements like the English score are like mandatory for somebody to meet. Yeah. Yeah. Rest entry requirement depends on how somebody is aligning their profile. Now, I believe that if the individual thinks that he lost six years, then it's a loss. Uh, if the individual justifies that in learning facet that I learned this and yeah. this is this was my journey and that's how I. So it, it is actually about how you want to coin your experience. It's yeah. not about what you what others are thinking about you and that's like again another point that jerry mentioned that uh, about us visas there was a lot of apprehension there were a lot of challenges which we are seeing that are kind of getting relaxed a lot so it gives you an opportunity to justify and tell your side of the story mm -hmm. uh, for all the people who are currently logged in i want to tell you that your statement of purpose is a really important piece of document in your US application process, whether you are applying to Clark or any other university, uh, just to make sure that you are pinning down your thoughts and your career alignment through that will be quite important. Cole, you want to add anything to it? Yeah, no, you did a great job there, Giant. It's really, again, just looking at the holistic application, um, you know, as long as you have some type of justification for large gaps, 
uh, whether it be, you know, learning, taking care of family, something that proves your journey, uh, we'll take a look at it. Uh, there is something uh, that we do require as well that's not listed. It's a statement of purpose. And that's really the spot that you have a chance to explain your journey, why you're interested um, in Clark University, why you're interested in studying in the U.S. And really, that gives you a chance to tell your side of the story. So just make sure that uh, you take that part seriously if you think that there is something that uh, might hold you back, uh, because we do look at those and uh, we'll be able to understand you at a better uh, kind of encompassing way if we see that you have written and taken the statement of purpose very seriously. So uh, keep that in mind as well. You always have a chance to tell your side of the story. True, true. Thanks a lot for answering this question. Uh, and I think SOP is an important document uh, which you should write uh, based on what is exactly you want to say to a university admissions committee. And if you have a real justification, I think they will listen to you. You must have added some value during these six years in your profile, which should be good enough to convince. And that's where you need to work hard on your SOP. Um, okay. Um, I'll just take the next question. Um, Somebody is asking, uh, can we, Dharmala Venkat Prasad Reddy, I don't know, can we extend our course curriculum by taking some extra courses and can we extend this course curriculum to one and a half years? So Dharmala is trying to ask, if the master's degree requirement is to complete 10 courses, are they allowed to take two additional or some other courses which they want to do and study for one and a half years? Does it impact their education in US or not? It should not be a problem for someone to take elective classes. Uh, Cole, uh, you can add to it. I, I don't think it should be a problem if somebody wants to take more electives or like elongate the program to three semesters. They can actually do eight units or the remaining eight units over a period of three semesters. Yeah, so if someone wants to do 30 credits, basically, he is supposed to do only uh, 20, um, we are, we, okay, we are giving 24 credits, uh, eight units. So if somebody wants to take six more credits and do it in one and a half year, I think that should be okay. Um, he can do more electives. Uh, Cole, uh, do you want to confirm this point? Yeah, so it really comes down to visa stipulations. And the one thing you have to keep in mind is in order to meet your visa requirements uh, that are set up by the US government is you have to take at least three courses uh, per semester while in the United States in order to be considered a full-time student in order to uh, meet your visa. So as long as you can take the at least three per semester, uh, you should be in good shape. Sure. If I um, might be able to quickly add to that, um, if you look at Clark and other institutions in the US, they also have very short term certificates. So if you wanted to finish off one more certificate in one semester, you can also do that. I know a lot of international students over the years have taken that option and they're usually two or three courses. So you can't usually add on to your master's degree doing extra classes, but they have certificates that you can kind of gain some extra experience in various areas. Wow, good. Uh, I think Gauri is asking and Jerry is trying to answer that question. Uh, one of my students has finished BCom and cleared foundation level of CA and has three years of articleship and two more years of experience. Can she apply? Uh, Gauri, I think you'll have to send the documents and uh, unless we look at the whole profile, um, we will not be able to comment right now. Thou, uh, as, uh, and we will be looking forward to having a work experience information more uh, because uh, as I think uh, Jen mentioned earlier, uh, anybody who has not done a three-year science bachelor degree, uh, we will need relevant work experience to take admission. Uh, Jen, is it is it right uh, what I mentioned? We need to look at the yes, doctor. Uh, you know, it will be recommended people coming in from the relevant background just so that they can succeed within the program. Uh, I saw what Ayushi shared with us was a list of questions for people with commerce background. Can they join the School of Professional Studies? Now, there is this whole perception about STEM degrees being the one in demand. Now, if somebody has not studied anything that is related to STEM, getting them into a program like data analytics or MSIT, 
can be a bit tricky. But yeah. if somebody has relevant work experience, we can always look at project management. My suggestion will be, unless you have the work experience or you have proper understanding of data analytics or IT, those programs should be limited to people who are coming in from relevant background. Um, again, BCom with maybe four years of work experience working in the data analytics side, somebody who has an understanding of languages like Python are more than happy. So more than happy to accommodate them. But again, it's more of a holistic call and the complete set of documents will be quite useful to take a decision on those. Uh, Cole, uh, your take or would you? Yeah, yeah. I, I, as you mentioned, it's really, we'll look at other things like your work experience, uh, if you have experience with, you know, Python or Java or any of these larger technical skills, uh, that will really help you in applying to these uh, STEM-based degrees. Uh, one thing Giant did mention is project management is actually a very good fit for people coming from, you know, commerce backgrounds or business backgrounds, uh, but want that STEM degree because it really is, like I mentioned, talking about projects and life cycles of projects. So that's something that you can gain experience with in kind of the business world. So it does have a natural fit uh, into that program. But if you're looking more at data analytics or uh, information technology, make sure you, you know, are working on or are studying either independently through university, uh, those technical skills, SQL, Python, uh, any languaging programs, uh, and we'll see that on your resume if you're able to provide uh, that information and it'll help lean to consideration. As we mentioned, we really are concerned with overall profiles of uh, a student as opposed to just, you know, only engineering or only tech or STEM to STEM. Uh, it's not necessarily, it has to be that way. So we'll, we'll take a look. Great. Um... Anyway, the Python, SQL, and data science related subjects are taught in our certification. So you will get to know that. I think it's more about whether you really want to do data science in Python um, to do your MS in US. I think that is where the question will be. Uh, I'm taking another question, which is important, I think. Sushant Kumar is asking, uh, what will be the difference between a person who is completing entire course from campus and someone who is just going for two semester? Is there anywhere it will mention in degree certificate like we had just completed two semester from Clark University? Um, I would like to answer that, Ankur. Uh, first of all, it will not be mentioned on your degree. Your final degree will come from Clark, irrespective of the fact you spend two semesters or you do the four semester, three semester program uh, with us. So that apprehension should not be there. Uh, look, there is this whole experience. It's overseas education. It's not just about the ranking university and STEM. It's about an experience. So if somebody wants to come and do an entire three semesters program with, our, with us, you will have more of that experience being on campus, being in thick of things, learning. But at the same time, you need to look at the cost component which is quite important. And that was something that we highlighted throughout the discussion. If you are joining this program through Upgrad, first of all, you will have a substantial savings on your actual expenses. Minus the any apprehension about the final degree saying that, oh, somebody came to this or somebody you'll have Diane, I think uh, from day one. We, we lost you for just a second uh, there. Sorry. Okay. So I, I was just saying that the applicant or the learner will have all the facilities and everything that a regular Clark graduate is entitled for. There will be no uh, there will be no difference in uh, in the learning process. Cole, would you like to take this on? I think my internet is just troubling me a lot. <laughs> no, uh, you, you said it well there, Giant. Uh, when you get to Clark University after completing your uh, part in, at Upgrad, 
you are going to be no different than any other student. Uh, the way you proceed at that point is going to be just like every other Clark student. You're going to be, uh, you know, on campus. You're going to be uh, able to uh, participate in all the clubs and everything like that. You'll graduate with the same degree. Um, you know, there's no notes or anything like that. It, you are a Clark student uh, after the completion, um, even during the start. So, yeah. I just take this question from Nishita. It's not relevant to the current webinar. I have completed my 12th this year and want to an admission abroad. So maybe there is a gap of one year between my 12th class and for bachelor. It is okay, right? Nishita, you actually can start studying today with Chandigarh University and Northern Arizona University curriculum. We are adding few more university partners for our bachelors. Uh, you can look at our website and can find options of studying in US by doing two years in India and two years in US. So your gap year will not be there in that case. Uh, but apart from that, a, a gap year between the 12th class as between and bachelor is completely acceptable in US. And people understand this year was a COVID year. So don't worry about that. Um, I, I'll have to drop out. So I'll ask Jerry to do the next set of the questions and just do a justice to the webinar. Uh, though we have already done one hour of webinar, but I still see some questions. Um, and Jerry, over to you now. All right. Thank you, Ankur. Um, yeah, we'll work through some of these questions, especially those um, specific to, to our conversation today and try and answer. I'll answer some of these other questions um, by typing. But um, the question uh, by an anonymous attendee here, three years, I have three years of work experience. Um, am I eligible for credit waiver if I'm coming through the upgrad program? I can answer that very quickly. Uh, yes, the idea of the upgrad program and the upgrad and Clark program is with that work experience, you come in, uh, we, you do our course through upgrad, our program, uh, and then you will get your credit waivers when you go on to Clark University. So uh, we don't have credit waivers through in the upgrad program itself, but if you do our program, you can get credit wa waivers in the U.S. at Clark uh, as well. So um, I'll, I'll leave that question um, as answered there. Um, and uh, I have, I did my BTEC in civil engineering with 66.5% and two backlogs. I have three and a half work uh, years of work experience in civil engineering. Um, and I am a physics teacher. Uh, am I eligible? Um, Cole, maybe you can uh, take that for us. Yeah. Um, it sounds like you have a pretty good profile. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like uh, I, I'm saying this, but I'll keep saying it. We'll look at, at you from top to bottom. Uh, physics background, obviously, that's some great STEM experience. Um, and we do like students from all different types of backgrounds. We feel that it enriches the, uh, the classroom because you're bringing in different perspectives uh, to the actual classroom itself. Uh, so especially having you know, some type of teaching experience, uh, that'd be great because you might be able to see something uh, that the professor is saying that a normal student wouldn't. So, you know, this is something we would absolutely take a look at. So, um, you know, I would encourage you to reach out to Upgrad. Thank you, Cole. Um, somewhat related, um, does this course need a background in computer science? You're from civil engineering with four years of work experience. I think Cole answered that there very specifically, but just for those that are still on the call now, um, the idea of Upgrad is, uh, uh, and the Upgrad programs are not just to give you credit, but also get you prepared. So if you're not from a computer science background, um, if you apply directly to some institutions in the US, you may not be able to get in. But if you do the program through Upgrad, you'll not only be able to get in and get that experience, you'll also get credit. So I think that's where uh, the Upgrad programs are a huge advantage um, for, for US students uh, because you can get that experience as well as um, get some credit for your studies as well. So anything giant or Cole you would like to add to that? Nothing, Jerry. It's you've answered it to the dot, so it should not. Uh, yeah, I try. Yeah. Um, so uh, next one I have here is. Um, going to try and see if I can do this one. I have completed my BTEC in 2017 with a 7.2 CGPA. I'm working in MNC since four years. Is it possible to get admission with IELTS overall of 6.0? So I think we've answered a lot of that, but Cole, um, you have the English requirements there actually still on the screen. You might be able to answer that IELTS question. Yeah, so the IELTS is going to be difficult. What I would encourage you to do is 
study and take the Duolingo test. Uh, if you're not familiar with Duolingo, it is uh, a web-based provider of English tests. So you can take it at home uh, from the comfort and safety of your home computer. Um, you don't need to schedule uh, you know, the test at a testing center or anything like that. Um, so I would really encourage you to uh, take the Duolingo test and see if you can get that 110 score because you know, we do require the English test scores of being 6.5. And while we will look at your application as a whole, uh, that could be something that disqualifies you if you uh, don't have the utmost uh, profile otherwise. So I, I really, really encourage you to either retake IELTS or uh, you know, try for Duolingo. Keep in mind, uh, a lot of institutions in the US, not just the US, uh, US, Canada, Australia, UK, they have specific English requirements and they expect them to be met. So, um, you know, it's, it's really difficult to get around that. Uh, it looks like your academic profile is pretty strong there, but definitely uh, to Cole's point, you know, try out uh, Duolingo. It's easily accessible and, and you can do it online. So I definitely give that an option um, as well. Um, I am from India, um, from Arisha Malkani. Um, I have completed my graduation, but due to the one-year backlog, I completed it in 2020. During the time of the backlog, I started working as uh, an inst instructional designer, which is all STEM-based um, education through Billabong International School. Um, I'll skip some of this, um, but thank you for the whole, the, your whole profile there. I'm really interested to go ahead in this field. Please help me get a scholarship or a way to settle abroad. Um, I think we touched a little bit on the scholarships we have uh, through uh, the partnership with Clark University and Upgrad, um, but we do not have full scholarships. So I want to put that out there uh, now. So there is still going to be some sort of uh, payment that you will have to make at some point. You will be guaranteed your scholarship through the, the collaboration we have, um, but it will be for a certain percentage and will not be the full amount. Um, so uh, Arisha, I hope that answers that question. Um, anything, Giant or Cole, you would like to add to that? No. Um, nothing, Jerry. Um, I think one year of additional backlog can be a bit of a concern for the entry requirement side of things, but I would again request you to fall back on your uh, counselor from Upgrad who will be able to evaluate your profile better than us in a platform like this. Thank you. Um, from Damala, uh, Venkant Prasad Reddy. Um, uh, I'm doing my best with the names. I'm hopefully, I'm hopefully I'm doing okay, uh, everyone out there. But uh, there are in total 10 credits within the Master of Data Analytics with Clark and Upgrad will be completing two credits with the remaining eight credits. Can we do three semesters per in the first year and then uh, three in first two and then one optional um, credit in third year? Uh, I, I think that's, so you're looking at uh, three credits in each semester of the first year and then two credits in your, your third semester, not third year. Yeah. Um, that is uh, a possibility, but Cole mentioned earlier uh, for visa regulations, you do need to be doing three courses per semester, um, some uh, at least, so to be considered full time. Sometimes if you're completing your degree in, in your final semester, you can get approval for, to take two, some, two courses in one semester. But I would definitely uh, advise against doing that um, if at all possible. I think it is better to finish um, in the time frame that you're supposed to and not under enroll in courses. Uh, but there is a process at every institution where you can apply for that special consideration. Um, Cole, if you want to ask, add anything to that on the Clark side. No, uh, you pretty much nailed it. We do have an international students office which specializes in visa questions such as this. So while you're here, uh, you'll always be able to reach out to that resource. It's one of the great resources we have here for international students at Clark. Uh, and this team really specializes in kind of immigration law. Uh, they specialize in what's going on in uh, visas, the changes in visas that happen um, and policies that happen on a yearly, weekly, daily basis, it seems like in the US. Uh, so, you know, you can always talk it over with them. But as Jerry mentioned, I would, you know, personally, I would play it on the safe side. I wouldn't want to risk my education uh, just to under enroll. Um, I would definitely want to make sure that I have it all met and have all three uh, per semester. 
Thank you, Cole. Um, anonymous attendee, uh, I'm pursuing my final year, three years bachelor, and was looking forward for a September 22 intake. When should I start applying? Can I apply on the basis of fourth and fifth semester, fifth semester mark sheets as due to COVID, sixth semester might get delayed? Um, Giant, do you want to uh, take that one for us? Yep. Um, I would recommend starting your application process um, as early as possible if you're looking for fall uh, September of 22 intake. Uh, one of the key points that I want to mention that our deadline will be around last week of May next year for September 22. So that if you are keen for joining that intake, you need to make sure you are submitting all five semester mark sheets. Your six semesters can six semester mark sheet can be submitted later on. Uh, the decision can be made on the basis of the five semester mark sheets that we have. Thank you. Um, I I know we're a bit over time already. Uh, everyone that are is on the call, I'm going to try and get through these last few questions as quickly as possible because I want to make sure everyone has their their answers. Um, so. Um, if, uh, if my graduation um, is by Hindi medium, uh, so am I eligible for a master's degree or not? This is from an anonymous attendee. You can see on the screen currently, we do have uh, English requirements for all of the institutions we work with uh, at Upgrad and we partner with. Clarks are listed here as IELTS 6.5, TOEFL 85, Duolingo 110. So uh, you will need an English test to be able to uh, be eligible for any, any program in the US um, typically. So, uh, but especially for Clark programs. Yeah, and um, Jerry, to yep. add to that question about Hindi medium, your transcript also need to be evaluated through WES and translated because that's one of the other areas. Uh, we hardly, I don't think we've got any student who studied bachelor's in Hindi medium. So that's, it, it will need a proper translation of uh, yep. for consideration. For sure. Yeah. Um, uh, Dharmala Vankan Prasad Reddy um, asked a follow-up question um, on, on an earlier question. What about F1 visa? Will it be for two years or one year? Um, and uh, Cole, you can probably add to this, but uh, to my knowledge, it is going to be a one, uh, actually a one-year visa um, as far as what you're applying for, but that could actually be wrong. So I don't know if you know Cole specifically on that. Yeah, I mean, I'm certainly not a visa expert, so... Uh, definitely contact the ISSO office that I mentioned, um, but I believe, uh, like you've mentioned, it should be applying for a one-year visa, but it will be able to be extended for the OPT. I think uh, since we are talking about regular I-20s, the visa duration on regular I-20 are two years. Um, yeah, actually, you know, and as, by, as I was... As I was thinking about that, um, yeah. um, my so my assumption is actually it's going to be a two year, not yeah. one year, because a master's programs and also ISSO offices typically like to give you a full length of the program in case you get delayed or fail classes or something happens um, along the way. So, um, at Damala, it should be a two year visa, like a normal master's visa. But um, of course, coming through upgrad and getting your credit, you should only be studying one year. Uh, but if you needed to extend, you would be able to so there the uh, ISSO offices are not going to put you in a bad spot so it should be a two-year um, I-20 two-year visa and then OPT afterwards of course. Um, will Clark University provide on-campus part-time jobs during study uh, will upgrade help till completion of course at Clark like accommodation and all. Um, Cole can answer the first part of that potentially and I'll answer the second. Yeah, so there are absolutely jobs on campus for students to apply to. It is something that you do have to take your own personal initiative and apply for these positions. So, you know, there are jobs, let's say, in dining facilities, athletics facilities, the library, for students to do around campus, which they can do in their first semester. And then after you've uh, completed your first semester, you'll be able to, uh, if you'd like, do a teaching assistantship in your second semester while at Clark. Um, and so that will become available at that time. And again, these things you have to apply for. Uh, they're not kind of granted. It's not part of the scholarship or part of the deal. Um, it's, and that's, you know, goes for every student uh, that comes to Clark University. So 
as long as you take initiative, um, look at the Handshake uh, online platform that Clark uses uh, and are kind of searching for it, you should be able to find something. But please make sure and keep in mind uh, that these jobs are in high demand, uh, especially since the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. You know, it's put a lot of financial stress on a lot of people. So a lot more people are looking for the jobs. So I wouldn't walk into the university thinking, um, I'm here, I'm in the US, here, where's my job? Uh, you know, definitely have that expectations that, you know, there could be some time before you do find a job and it will take work to find it. Thanks, Cole. Um, I'm going to add to that, um, uh, you know, as a, a been working with institutions for a very long time, um, you should never really expect that an on campus part time job is going to be guaranteed to you, um, especially after uh, during this pandemic situation, a lot of universities are in a lot of financial stress. So part time jobs are a little bit more difficult to come by. Um, so uh, to Cole's point, don't be expecting you're going to to have a part time job on, on arrival at any institution you're going going to unless it says so in your letter um, and uh, and keep in mind that you know it's very competitive for on-campus jobs um, even if they are just for international students there there are it's still a very competitive area on the question about upgrad uh, upgrad will help you yes up until uh, completion of your course at Clark accommodation and all um, we're also here for you when you complete your course at Clark. So we can help you if you need options in coming back to uh, India or in staying in the US for a career wise or, or other options as well. So if you're an upgrad alumni, you will always be an upgrad alumni and, and be part of our system. So yes, we will be here for you at, at the various stages of, of your uh, career or academic or professional career as you go. So um, I'm going to uh, make this the final question, and it's uh, not one that's going to take a very long answer, but there was a lot of questions about this. Um, so a lot of questions about Ivy League institutions and um, scholarships and, and being a good candidate and those kinds of things. Um, I have uh, been working in the international education industry for almost 20 years now, and I can tell you now I've never been able to uh, identify specific Ivy League institution entry requirements, um, either just for admission or scholarship. So it's extremely competitive. It changes yearly. They look at your whole profile. They are looking for all the tests, the GREs, the GMATs, and all those types of things, looking for the highest level of English. Um, extremely competitive. You may have the best profile um, possible and still not get in. So just keep that in mind. Um, what I would always say is apply for that Ivy League school that you're looking for, but always have a backup option or two. So, um, you know, an Ivy League school is a, a top 10, top 20 school in, in the US, for example. You know, think about a top 50, think about a top 100 like Clark as a backup just in case. Um, and then also think about, you know, the opportunity to study your master's uh, at a, say, Clark University, and then potentially go on to an Ivy League school after. I can tell you now, I've talked to a lot of graduates from Clark University who've gone on to Harvard, gone on to Yale, gone on to the different, um, you know, Ivy League institutions, especially in the Northeast. Clark is a very good institution, uh, but getting into an Ivy League directly can be tough without some of that U.S. academic experience. So keep that in mind um, and somewhat of a pathway to a pathway, but um, it is an option that you can think about. So at this time, uh, I'm going to say uh, uh, thank you all for joining uh, the call. It was very good to have everyone here. A special thank you to Cole Klosser from Clark University and Giant Tonage Doss uh, from Clark as well uh, in, the, in the India office. Um, but thank you both for joining. Uh, we really appreciate it on our side. And thank you everyone else for your questions and um, taking your time today.